первый луч, наверное. А, дети, не стесняйтесь, можете проходить вперед. Это именно для вас урок, так что давайте двигаемся. Встаем, встаем, встаем. Да, да, да. Все, все, все. Не бойтесь, вас никто здесь не обидит. Тут все свои. Okay. Братья, сестры, у кого нету переводчиков, у всех переводчики? Что это будет урок на английском для детей. И прошу принять во внимание то, что этот урок сделан для детей, на уровне для детей, поэтому презентация будет такая более детская, с картинками на детском уровне. Окей, okay, kids, what we're going to talk about today is a parable of a sower. Does anybody remember what we've talked about last time I was up here? I know some of you were here. Stella. No. <laughs> okay. Well, we talked about uh, Daniel, right, and how he went through the, the trials that God took him through and all that stuff. Well, today we're going to talk about the parable of a sower, and we're going to read from Mark, the book of Mark. That'll be chapter 4. He began to teach again by the sea, and such a very large crowd gathered to him that he got <clears throat> into a boat in the sea and sat down. And the whole crowd was by the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things and parables and was saying to them in his teaching, listen to this, behold, the sower went out to sow. As he was sowing, some seed fell beside the road and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky, road, rocky ground where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth to, of soil. And after the sun had risen, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it. And it yielded no crop. Other seeds fell onto the good soil, and as they grew up and increased, they yielded a crop and produced thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. And he was saying, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, has any of you ever grown anything? We have one, one guy. What did you grow? I'm sorry? Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Awesome. How about you? beans. Great. Well, I've never grown anything. Um, so when I was going through this parable, um, learning everything about it was actually quite interesting. What the process of growing the seed and the whole plant and fruit, it's quite interesting. Um, in this passage, we're going to talk about a few things. And some of those things are the grounds where the seed is falling. The grounds where it's falling, what does it mean? and also the, the crop, the, the fruit that the seed produces. But before we get there, let's talk about the sower and the seed. Now, when the Jesus was talking about this parable to the people that were listening, Jesus was the sower. And the seed is the word of God. Now, in today's day, sower is anybody who takes the seed, the word of God, and shares it with the people. He takes the gospel and takes it to the world, to those grounds that we're going to talk about. The grounds are people. Now, you can take that as four different people, and you can take that as one person going through these stages. Now, we have one that is the rocky ground. That's one that is um, by the road, I'm sorry. And then you have the rocky ground, the ground that is by the thorns, and then you have the good ground. You guys see all right? Am I a little on the way? Okay. <clears throat> so.
So we'll start with the first one. The seed that fell beside the road. Now, have you guys ever taken the trips down the woods on the road, on those paths that they have among the bushes and trees and all that? It's very hard and stumped down, difficult ground, right? And if you just throw a seed on it, it's not really gonna do much, right? Well, when we're talking about a person who you're sharing the word of God, this is the kind of person that is super hard. Their, their heart is completely rejecting the word of God. They're, they're so full with sin, their thoughts are completely covered with sin. And they're just very difficult people. And most likely they will reject the word of God. They, they won't even care to listen about it. And this is, these are the people that the devil is in control of these people. He, he's the ruler in their life. And they don't want to do anything about it because they really can't due to the fact that their heart is so hard to accept any of the word. And on top of that, the beauty of this parable is that Jesus explains this parable. We don't need to really think hard on it. Jesus says himself what the parable means. And further in this chapter, Jesus said that these people with a hard heart, once they hear the word, the devil just immediately comes and takes it away. So these guys need to go through some serious work on their heart, and this is where God needs to do plowing and take them through the difficulties. And by his grace, even people like that have an ability to become the good soil, accept the word of God, and produce crop. Then we'll go to the second type of people, and these are the people that are considered the rocky ground. When the seed falls on this ground, when the word is given to these kind of people, they immediately accept this word, and as I call them, the emotional believers. So let's say somebody says, um, let us all repent. And one person runs up, second, third, fourth, then 10, 50, 20 people. These are the emotional believers. They just go with the crowd. They don't really understand what's the the meaning of the word, the depth of the word, they just go with what the surrounding people do. And they are the kind of people that even if they repent, they don't repent fully with their heart, they just do it because of the people that surround them. And they're temporary followers. So basically after they repent, they'll do some praying, they'll do some Bible reading, but eventually what happens is the temptation, temptations comes around. And this is what I call that the devil takes over by force. So what he does is he throws problems at these people, and these people reject the word of God, and they go back to their normal life. They, they harden their heart. They don't believe and don't understand. They don't have that firm foundation that every Christian needs to have. As we continue on to the third, you have the ground with the thorns. Now, this is the ground that is a good ground. These are the people that... They truly repented. They accepted the word of God. They understood what is required of them. They believed that Jesus came and Jesus died. And what happens is, as they continue growing, they get to the point where they start worrying about their lives more than they worry about what God wants them to do in their lives. So for instance, you guys are small, so when, once you grow up, you're gonna wanna go to the college, you want to have a good job, and you want to have a family, a good house. That's normal, every person wants that, that's fine. The problem is, with these kind of people, they desire that more than they desire to grow in the Lord. They, they, they desire that more than wanting to know God and grow in Him and bring the fruit that God is requiring. And to be honest, this is the condition that today in the world, majority of Christians are in. Some of them don't even recognize that they're in that condition, but that's, that's the cold truth is that we get so comfortable. This is the comfort zone of a Christian person, that you get so caught up in your basic life and basic needs of the life that you tend to forget about what God really wants in your life. Now, we get into the good soil. This is the soil where every Christian wants to be at, to start. A true repentance, nothing 
in the heart that's preventing the word of God to grow and flourish and bring the fruit. So these are the people that they hear, they understand, they believe, and most importantly, they obey the law. That's, that's, that's the biggest factor of being a Christian, is obeying what God wants you to do in the life. So everything that is in the Bible, we are called to obey that. And that what brings us to bearing the fruit and growing. This is the process that when you grow tomatoes or beans, it doesn't grow overnight. This is a process that keeps on going day after day, year after year, and however long God gives us on this planet, we strive to grow in that and get to know God more. So this is also the kind of people that they will try to have a good thing that God gives them, everything that God gives them as far as the work, education, uh, a family, you know, kids and things like that. They will accept all that. They'll thank God for that. But still, their main goal, their main point is going to be Christ, the word of God. Everything else that the world gives is kind of like secondary. Everything else that God provides them with in this world is secondary. The main point is God and Christ. And those are the people that once the trials come around, because devil is not going to sit around and just enjoy you flourish and getting to know the God. Devil is going to do his work as well. And he's going to try to bring you down. That's, that's his main goal, is to bring you down, to bring you back down to this stumped out ground, you know, or the rocky ground. Anything besides the good soil. And the people that obey, they come down to the point of coming to Christ with their struggles. With their trials, they come to God and they ask for his guidance, his um, way out of the trials that they're going through. So these are the people that will, will stand firmly because their foundation is on Christ. Their roots are deep in his word and they obey what the word says. And this brings us to the point of 30, 60, 100 times fruit. Now... Let's say you plant a seed, right? And imagine from one seed you, well, let's say you plant a pineapple out of all the things. It's going to be one pineapple that will grow out of it. Now picture out of one seed, you grew 30 pineapples, 60 pineapples, 100 pineapples. Like that, that's just unheard, right? Well, that's, that's the beauty of the gospel is that once it goes into your heart, once the true seed of gospel goes into your heart, this is where the God takes over, and this is where the unbelievable happens, that you bring 30, 60, 100 fold. But let's talk about the 30, 60. I have three definitions for you what the 30, 60, 100 times can mean when it comes to bringing the fruit to the God. And the one major thing is the ultimate harvest, which is when Jesus Christ comes for the second time, He's going to gather all the harvest. He's going to gather all his Christians, all the believers, and he's going to be the one who will be able to tell you how much fruit you brought. I can't tell you how much fruit you bring. Your parents can't tell you how much fruit you bring. To be honest, I don't think you'll be able to say how much fruit you bring. Only Christ will be able to tell you, okay, this is how much you brought. The second understanding is how much of your Christian life has impacted the people that you live around. Now, if you live a true, honest Christian life, obeying God's word, believing in everything that the Bible says, it will affect the people around you. The people around you will see that. The kids that you go to school, they'll see that. And how will they see that? Well, that brings us to the third definition of the, the bringing the fruit, is the spiritual fruit. And the spiritual fruit is that you have the joy Love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Those are all the things that when trial comes around, instead of reacting to those trials in a negative way, you react in the love and joy. When somebody bothers you or hurts you, you don't pay back in the same way. You pay back with kindness and so on and so forth. So these are the ways that we can explain the way that you can bring fruit to God. So you can't have all that at once. I'm not, I can't tell you that, you know, if you obey God's word this much, you'll bring this much. That's not how it works. I, I, I don't want you guys to leave with that thought. I want you guys to understand that even if you obey God 98% and not the 
I'll tell you that the biggest blessing is going to be in that 2% that you don't obey. So strive to obey God 100%. Have the desire not to bring 30, 60, but to bring all 100 and more. That's, that's the, the point of bringing the fruit. It's not limiting yourself to these numbers. This was just given to, for us to understand that once the harvest comes around, not everybody's going to bring the same amount of the fruit to glorify God. Everybody's going to bring different things. And to bring it to a final thought, why was this parable chosen to give to you kids? As some of us were that hard stumped down ground at one point. I was one of those people. Some of us were the people that were by the rocky sea, uh, the rocky soil. Some of us are people that are among the thorns. The beauty is that you guys right now are the good soil. You know, it, the sin has not consumed you. The world has not done anything to you. You know, we, we, we're in a church and you guys are kids of a Christian parents and that's the beauty. Your, your heart is pure and it's a good soil to work with. And the reason is that if we take a good, honest seed that is of God, right now is the best time for you guys to accept that seed and to let it grow in you, to try to get to know it more, to understand it more, to ask questions, to grow in it. Now, that brings me to the final verse of that whole parable, which is, he who has ears, let him hear. Now, there is a deep meaning behind those words, so I prayed about how I can explain it to you guys, so I just go with the simple, easy way of understanding. Um, we all have these two things, right? These two ears. Now, these two ears have three major things in them. Let's put it that way. You have the ear trumpet, that's this little flappy thing in the canal that goes in it. They also call it the auditory canal. Then you have a drum, and you have a hammer and anvil in it. That's already inside the ear. Now, why I'm saying all this is because when you guys hear things, this might look complicated, but I'll explain it. When the sound comes into your ears, it hits that drum. The drum takes the vibration, sends it to the hammer, and the hammer hits the anvil. That's Okay, the laser doesn't work. You see where it says hammer and anvil? You guys see that? Okay, well that's where the vibration goes through. And that bone on the side, stirrup, that's where everything happens. From that stirrup, the vibration goes inside your ear and that's where you hear all the things. The beauty is that inside that blue spiral thing, there are thousands and thousands of hairs that catch all the sounds. And they say that the amount of hairs in there is just as many sounds as you can think of in the world. That's how many hairs are in that little part. So that way, when the sound comes through your ear, your mind registers it. Now the beauty is that before it even reaches to your thoughts, to your minds, it goes through this whole process. So me saying these words, you're hearing them, there's a whole magnificent process that goes just inside that one little ear of yours. And the concept is, Jesus says, take care of what you listen. What goes inside your ears goes inside your minds, it goes inside your brains, and from there it goes inside your heart and inside your spirit. That's why I take time right now to what you hear. Because what goes in inside your ear is what's going to go into your heart and what eventually is going to come out. If you're going to put something bad in it, if you're going to listen to bad things, negative things, wrong things, it's all going to be stored in your heart. You will not be able to block it. If it goes in your ear, it's going to be in your heart. So take care of what you hear. All right? Is that well understood? I got one smile and a nod. Good. <laughs> All right. Amen.